Uh, but in terms of naked, I mean, it's seen, wow, this is crazy. The, this company has been in the, let's see, when did it actually start picking up? So did it IPO before? Cause I'm seeing volume at in 2016 of like a hundred and stuff. When did they become public? That's the, that's the thing. Cause some of these price points are, are valued in prior to their um, valuation. But like it hasn't hit it, even when it was trading. I'm just looking like it was at 32 bucks in 2018. So this may be another one of those um, influx because of the Wall Street bets and the short squeeze. Yeah, I believe I don't, it was. Yeah, this is definitely it. But I mean, th that's not to say it's still gonna happen. It's still not gonna happen because there's still a lot of people uh, that are trying to show like, hey you know, they've had enough or they feel that they've had enough on how some of the market is being manipulated. So that I would say with, with this company, just do your due diligence, um, research it, see like what their price history oh, has been. Today. So um, it, it just seems like a lot, maybe I'm just trying to theorize just based on what I've been seeing in, the, in everything today and from the last couple of weeks or actually even back, I guess, from March when there's been more retail investors. So I would just be careful. I mean, today there was two bill, two and a half billion. Um, there's 2.5 billion volume for today. Yesterday there was roughly point, uh, roughly 0.5 billion. So you just have to be careful with a lot of this volume because these can be pump and dumps. So yeah. So and then another one that popped up was IMMR, which is Immersion Corporation. Uh, IMMR? Yeah. I don't know if, I know Ryan is in here. I don't know if he's there. Um, he might know about that bad boy. It looks like it went, it kind of tanked after hours. Yes. Um, looking at IMMR, let me actually take a look at this company, see what this is. <clears throat> So looking at the chart, it had a major spike since December, end of December. Um, I mean, it's hit past this, but it hasn't been up in this level, this $14 and this $14 range since 2018 again. And it hasn't been even close to testing that until the last two weeks, three weeks. So I would be just just careful, uh, unless they have some good uh, good products that are coming out. Just maybe wait a week to see if it clears down to get a better entry point, because most of it, even for the let me draw my fib my fib sequence real quick. But just looking at it, it looks like it's overbought just on a technical analysis standpoint, because it hit a low, it hit a low this year and and almost a high. So it's definitely going, it, it has to be hyped up because of all this stuff, because right now it's passing, it's passing the um, 78.6 range of the Fibonacci sequence, which would be considered overbought, but it could still be hyped up. I mean, this is, we, just so everyone knows, like what, hap what has been happening, it happened before with Volkswagen, but with this type of magnitude, this has never happened before. So like we're in the history books of stuff that's happening and likely regulations are going to be implemented. I don't know how soon, but there, this, there will be a change in the market from, from this stuff. That, that's my personal opinion, but knowing how history has been, there's going to be some stuff changing. Um, if anyone wants to add comments to that, I'm more than welcome to uh, discuss I'll, it further. I'll add a comment. On. So I'm just looking at this. I mean, just based on what I'm reading. So haptic technology, Basically, if PlayStation 5 launch goes really, really well, this could be a catalyst for haptics adoption, which I guess this company plays in that space. Um, I mean, if you're short-term trading it, I would say, listen to Chris, if you're long on this, then you need the adoption of that type of technology to really hit, uh, you know, in terms of ad uh, mainstream adoption and people I mean, it could do well if PlayStation 5 launch goes well and this takes off. 
maybe it's worth a gamble holding it long just to see what happens. Yeah, it, it's the, the, the thing is, is that as now we're becoming more, well, we have been globalized for a long time, but now that we have the technology to communicate anywhere in the world, you know, and everyone can share their thoughts, it's really hard to figure out what tech company or what company is going to make it, what's not going to make it. I mean, there's just so many variables. It's, it's just, it's, it's good, but then it can also be just too much information and, um, but looking at which, which was the stock ticker again? So I can actually just look at it real quick. I M M R. I, oh, oh, we're talking about the same one. Okay. I'm just making sure. So, yeah, I mean, if, if they sell more of the PS5 controllers, um, I know PS5 has been sold out everywhere when they get them, but then again, it's also, we're in a pandemic, there's shortages, there's a lot of scalpers now. So it's just, there's just so much to predict. Um, but if, but if you think that, you know, it's going to hit big because, you know, all your kids want to play games. I mean, I play my, I play my games. Um, and if the PlayStation five controller is better than an Xbox controller, I'm just making examples. I'm not saying it's better or not, but um, you know, just if you feel it, you know, yeah. Um, but just, especially for having thoughts on whether the buyer sell for this week and next week, whew, I mean, we're, we're doing history right now. So it's really tough to tell. Um, and there could just be hype all around. I mean, in terms of market, there, it, we are we were in a drop, even though there were hype stocks with the ones that were talking about short with a high short interest. So, um, yeah, not financial advice. He just likes the controller. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that's so so and then, uh, before we go too much further down that rabbit hole, if you want to talk to Chris after he's available. Yeah, um, yeah I'm available all the time. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, and what, another question was, you know, um, somebody said something about like the stops today. Uh, so I, I mentioned what circuit breakers are because that's what was happening today. I, I don't mind going into, I don't, I don't mind going into that. I, that's a pretty simple one. So there are, are market exchange circuit breakers that follow the SPICs or the S&P 500. And if it drops to certain percentages, there's a, a all halt. So meaning there's no trading whatsoever across all boards. So I think it's 7, 13, and 20. I, I don't, yeah, 7, 13, yeah. 20. So 7% stops for 15 minutes. 13%, I'm pretty sure it's 13%. If it hits 20 on the third time, done for the whole day. No trading. Then it restarts the next day. And that's used to protect, you know, everyone. Now, there are um, personal circuit breakers on each stock too. And that's controlled by some exchanges and by some other um not by the brokerage, but by the exchanges. So like GameStop, for, ex for example, up or down, there were halts because it was to let people figure out like, hey, you know, what are you doing? You got five minutes, you know, you're on timeout, whether it was going up or down. So that's why there, there are halts for, for the search for, 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 for each, each, for each, for each uh, oh. stock. And next week, I'm going to mute everybody, just so you know. <laughs> like, we're just going to make it so nobody can talk unless I unmute them. Um, but um, Jordan had a question. So with a new presidential agenda taking action on climate change, which stocks will we, will we be looking at? I think this needs more attention. I agree. I know Dan's got some good answers here. I know Chris loves a good climate change debate. So we can have uh, Dan, let's start with you. Yeah, uh, we actually called this out in last week's call, um, ICLN specifically. I'm in ICLN and I'm holding that long. Uh, just because I don't know specific stocks in the sector, but I want to be exposed to it. So I'm holding that ETF. Uh, and I'm pretty much banking on the fact that with the Dems controlling all three, you know, the House, Senate, and the presidential seat, that they're going to get this clean bill passed. And that's going to bode very well for the sector. So I'm banking on that. If it happens, hopefully it happens. I don't know when it'll happen, but I know the clean bill is in, you know, talks of being passed. Um, so that's how I'm playing it. I don't know specific stocks within that sector. So if there is one, let us know. Happy to take a look. Um, yeah, yeah, because Biden was talking about initiating, uh, you know, the Clean Bill Act. So another thing to look at, when, when you think that there's going to be a catalyst of some sector, maybe do some, some research on what else can contribute to that sector. So for example, if you're buying, um, like if they're talking about clean energy, well, solar panels that would be considered clean energy 
you know, uh, wind turbines, things like that. So I can think of one thing. I can think of steel. You're going to need a lot of metal to create these products. So maybe if you, if now again, I don't know a lot in the sector either. So if if you know maybe a certain company that has done well with with mining and steel, then maybe you might want to look at that too. Um, again, I'm just this is all speculation. But if there's one catalyst for one part, there are other parts that need to contribute also to make that as well. So it's kind of like whatever anyone that's in that's a part of it they're all in it together just it depends on how much aluminum oh well then an aluminum um, yep. i i i don't know i i don't make solar panels i wish i did but <laughs> so, Chris, so, so like very good point as well when it comes to taking a step back from specific stocks just thinking about investing or trading in general when you're looking for opportunity also look on the outer rims of that, right? It's like, to this point, you know, clean energy, this and that, but what are the supply chains that go into helping clean energy become a thing and get built up? Like the infrastructure, uh, the suppliers, those can also benefit. I mean, we're seeing it play out right now with EV. Yeah, Tesla, NEO, they're all up, but battery, battery stocks are also up too because they, you know, are used in these vehicles. So that's like a perfect example of looking beyond the actual immediate play to see if there's opportunity surrounding it. Absolutely, Dan. Uh, yeah, this is Cruz. Um, so when you're taking a look at battery stocks also, uh, you know, what makes up a battery? Typically there's lithium and once again, nickel, um, you know, two of the biggest components in a battery uh, currently. Um, and then, of course, uh, with the infrastructure that you were talking about, you have to take a look at all the verticals, the verticals uh, meaning uh, infrastructure, which is steel still, um, you know, especially for the windmills, for the generator, so on and so forth. And also a lot of the grids for the solar panels, not necessarily just the solar panels themselves. So, I mean, you have to look at, uh, you know, all the verticals, including, you know, the steel bolts that they're still utilizing, uh, zinc plated, so on and so forth. It's not just, um, you know, solar panels itself or the silica gel, you know, the silica wafers. So, I mean, that glass uh, silica is also doing pretty well right now. I know that's uh, one of the stocks that are overlooked. Um, but yeah, I mean, you need to have glass when you have a solar panel, especially out there in the desert. Yes, no, I agree. The whole it's the whole supply chain that that creates the product. But now that's not going to say if if EV goes to solar panels, it doesn't mean all of, all of those supply chain chains that are in the market will all shoot up a same percentage it that would be what would be market sentiment on top on top of fundamentals other things other factors too so just have to make sure you if you look at something else see like hey how did this perform you know given other times so if you look back at the history of of the stock performing too so just just have to take you know do your your dd or your due diligence and and see how other people or see how how those um companies uh are affected with that supply chain. Right. I mean, and I mean, if you if you're subscribed to the newsletter, you might see some stuff in there that gives you some good direction. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, as a investor slash trader, I'm always looking beyond just the immediate play, right? For opportunity, you know. Okay, great, renewable energy, but what else is going to benefit from that catalyst? Just uh, it's it's just a good mindset to have when you guys are looking at either investing for long term or playing a certain sector for the short term, just, again, just look beyond the immediate play because there's always opportunity beyond what you see in front of you. I know that sounds very philosophical and probably cliche, but it's the truth. Um, anyways. Any, I'm trying to look and see if there are any more questions on the chat. Thank you. I think it was one that also, just so you know wall street bets the reddit is back up but they did lose their discord so mm -hmm. that might slow them down a little bit that's why i was looking down for so long do Check you out. guys have any thoughts on any stocks which one that exploded recently penny penny stocks yeah that so might we need ryan we need yeah. ryan for that ryan was in here <laughs> Year. I was just curious. I'm back. 
I'm back. Okay, there's yeah. there's your there's your p- penny stock guru, Mr. Ryan Alexander is about. What does rise What does rise eye look at? <laughs> All right, so sundial. <clears throat> so what I was looking at on sundial, I was just kind of waiting for it to pull back from when it was like around 80 cents and my target entry was around 63 cents just because if you see in uh the beginning of november there was a spike to around uh 60 cents at the high and then it came down to 23 cents and then it went back up to 95 cents and then bouncing coming back down it hit a low of 42 cents and that kind of formed the the like overall trend line that I was following um <clears throat> and then I was after it hit 80 cents I was waiting it for it to hit around 63 cents which was where I saw it hitting on the trend line but it actually ended up dropping all the way to 50 cents so with today's action and after hours I'm s- still bullish going into tomorrow and I've, I have like a $5 price target on this, but that that's like more of a long-term price target, but short term, this stock could easily be over, what did it close at? Uh, six, 76 cents. So this thing could be at a dollar um, pretty soon, in my opinion. It had a high of dollar twenty-eight on... May 18th, 2020. So that's something that could easily happen again. And then it had a high of $1.25 on June June 8th. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, I think if it's going to make a bigger move up, that'll be the first spot that it hits. So my target would be around, would be a dollar plus. But if you're, if you're willing to take it a step further, a dollar 25 to dollar 28 would be a good spot to look at um to exit potentially or take some profit because it will see some resistance possibly that's what i think and james just so you know thanks good advice ryan's section in the newsletter that's new that'll probably be probably be your best friend for a while before you start trading the options and all that kind of stuff because he throws some really good time and effort into the research that goes into it um and yeah. him and I are working together to make more on that as well. Well, I mean, I've got about 600 or so invested already between uh, AMC and Planeteer. Oh. So You're I'm okay. just looking to see what other things I can get into, branch out a little more, you know, diversify. And uh, Paul's been talking to me about the sundial, so. Am I looking at a little more? Thanks. Yeah. So, then- so, so t- hold on. I have some more to add to that real quick. So I'm also looking at IGC. And what I like to do is I like to look at all, like a bunch of different stocks in the same sector. And if I see that one's kind of getting ready to go up, it helps me confirm that the other ones will go up. Cause I mean, they like to go up together anyways, but seeing IDC down and being bullish on that and still being bullish on sundial, it just makes me more bullish on sundial. So I, th- I let's, I would, ex- I'm expecting the mar- marijuana market to repeat what it did in 20, I believe 20, at the, uh, 2018, like January, 2018, when like the, when after, after uh, Tilray IPO'd went to like 300 and, you know, it had a low of around four dollars and sitting at like twenty, I think. So I think we still have a lot of upside in the marijuana market. But yeah, at, it's, and there, it's getting legalized everywhere. So yeah, yeah, definitely. So that's what I'd be. I mean, that's what would keep me bullish on it. It's fun to like you can play like with pennies. Like it's really good to play the like play it weekly and try to like sell the highs and accumulate, especially if you're trying to go long-term. But if like, you can't, if you don't have the time to do that, then, you know, 
I think just marijuana stocks in general are a good long term hold. Yeah, kind of adding, kind of adding on to what Ryan's saying. Another thing to also maybe look at, and this would be considered more of a short, short play, as in going against, is seeing what disruption could happen in the market. I'm looking up what Philip Morris uh, is right now because if if marijuana stocks are going up, cigarettes maybe become less common. But again, I I don't smoke. So I don't really know a lot of the sentiment value in that. That would mean like, what does the market feel compared to smoking versus alcohol versus marijuana? Um, but if like for say Philip Morris, if marijuana is becoming legal, they may get it on the piece of the action too. So currently right now, if they're only within a certain market of, of cigarettes, for example, they could jump into marijuana, but now they haven't announced that yet. Not to my knowledge though. So that's also something to kind of think about and put it in your toolbox where, you know, what else could benefit from that? Just kind of throwing that out there just so you can think about different things. Oh yeah, I definitely, I appreciate all the advice. Um, yeah, I, I've quit smoking before, so I can tell you it's definitely extremely hard. Uh, it's one of the hardest things you might ever do but i appreciate all the advice thanks guys no problem anybody else any questions at all um so yeah big things are coming which is exciting so if, if you're part of the group you're already closer to um us guys that are personified in, in this app that we're creating um, the web version will launch this next month. So we have beta testers that, that are using it that are in the group currently. Um, and then uh, we will release it and we're gonna be doing a couple different releases over the next couple weeks. Um, like we've got a new landing page and a new website, which is super exciting. Um, the app itself will launch iOS in March, um, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, but kind of the big things is we're constantly adding to the newsletter and like we have a thing going over all the surveys of people that gave us feedback for that. So uh, definitely support the, 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 the group, help us with subscribing to the newsletter. Um, if anybody has any questions that didn't get answered, you can direct message myself, Chris, Dan, you could even throw us into a group message if you want. Um, or just ask it in the group. Because if you have that question, somebody else in the group probably does. So us being able to answer it on that public forum is really great for other people. Dan, Chris, Ryan, is there anything you want to talk about before we, will the app be Android platform as well? It will, just not right off the bat. So iOS and web version, unfortunately, take the cake. Uh, but I, I do believe the Android version will not be too far behind. But with that being said, you can still use the web version on your phone. Uh, the only parting thought I have is tomorrow's going to be another epic battle on the short squeeze stocks. So be smart, trade smart, don't take on more risk than you're willing to. And then make sure if you're day trading it, you guys are, you have a plan of attack in terms of like when you're going to get out, at what point, you know, stop losses, whatnot. just uh be smart about the short squeeze stocks tomorrow and Friday. Yeah, I agree. And and I, I've told everyone, weak hands are green hands. You know, if you are up 20%, you know, that's better than being down 50% thinking, hey, I could get more. So for me, that's what I like. I always set a price target of what I need to make for the day. Um, so like what Dan was saying is just be smart about it. Don't put on too much exposure on one stock. Um, I have a lot of different little tricks and I could go on as you guys already figured out. But if you want to message me, you're more than welcome to. My last name is Haven, H-A-V-E-N. I've been trying to change the name so you can find me on Facebook. But uh, but yeah, so you've seen me post a couple of times. Just look for the guy with the flamethrower. I got something to add to, um, especially like with the short squeeze thing going on and like <clears throat> the craziness. I think it's best to not, if you're looking to get into a position, don't be chasing the, the stocks. 
one rule that I do is like, it's not like a rule that I wrote down, but you know, it's something that I just kind of do. I, I won't really buy stock that's over 5%, up over 5%, unless, you know, like the charts like perfect, you know, but that for me is like a good way to not, you know, chase the stocks, you know, I mean, you just got to be patient with the ones that are just getting started. So yeah, overall, just don't get too emotional about the stocks that are going to be going up a lot. Look for the ones that are, you know, getting ready to do what those ones did before they went up. Do, do you guys want me to make like a short video of kind of how the short squeeze works and a better definition on it and maybe using like some, some drawings and things like that? Would, would you guys appreciate that? Yes, most definitely. Okay, because I think a lot of people may be hearing the term and not really knowing. Um, I can go over it right now quickly if you want to maybe even cut in uh, the, this segment of the video into another video and post it. Connor, it's up to you.